without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. Hey! Welcome to the Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. We desire to share our love, life, and legacy with the hopes that it inspires, compels, and challenges others. We're all about growth and leveling up, and that is what we aim to do. Now, something that we would like everyone to understand is that this podcast is based on our opinions, framed from our life's experiences and perspectives. This is not to say that we are right and you're wrong. This is merely to challenge and elevate our lives, your life, and the conversations that surround the topics we speak on. Welcome to the Love Life Legacy Podcast. Uh, tonight, you know, dealing with uh, relationships, but in the subtopic area of boundaries in a relationship. Um, everybody talks about needing space or respecting um, boundaries, but what does it mean to actually respect boundaries? Are certain boundaries healthy to actually present in a relationship and should all of them be respected? And we're going to talk about it. I just it. want to give a shout out again to uh, Real Talk with Rajon. Yes. Uh, we had an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, conversation slash interview with him on the 1st of July. It was really good. Check out his page. Um, he also had one other interesting thing. Well, yeah, a couple interesting things. But um, uh, um a presidential candidate um, who entered the running as an independent person. Um, uh, oh, her name, Jade Simmons, I believe it is, uh, from Charleston. You know what I'm saying? So go go to his page, visit it, listen to that interview. It was really good. It was really informative. Yes. And I just thought it was awesome. Um, what else? Um, any else? Any other new things we need to catch up on? Um... Nope. Oh, nope. As you guys can tell, we did officially move to Sundays. Um, Saturdays just wasn't working um, just with the busyness of our lives. So we have pivoted to uh, Sunday evenings at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time to bring you the Love Life Legacy podcast. Facts. Um, what else? Oh, Megan said the song is my favorite. <laughs> I love it. I love so, it. Oh, that's new. So we got somebody working on are actually making music yes. for the song yes. for the Love Life Legacy, Legacy podcast. podcast. Hey, Love <laughs> Life Legacy, Legacy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we excited about really that. Really excited about that. Uh, Curtis said, hello. How are you doing? We're doing great. You're doing great, brother. What's going on with you? Uh, sup, y'all? Raymond. Simon. Ray, what's up, brother? Oh, Congratulations on your 10 year cancer free landmark. I saw that. I liked it. Brother. Yeah. Proud. Happy. And happy for you, man. Mm -hmm. Me and you talk offline when we are at work. And I tell you, your story is so powerful. And I'm going to keep pushing so you can continue to have that conversation so you can formulate that into a movement. You are inspiration. And I just want to appreciate you for actually making your 10-year milestone right. for being cancer-free. Yeah. Big ups to you, brother. Yes, yes, yes. Big ups. Oh, he put a multiple. It's just for you. You saw it? No. Oh, right here. So, awesome. Um, oh. I think that's pretty much all the catching up we had to do. Yes. Um, oh, um, so next week. What's today? The 6th? So our 14 year anniversary would be on when Tuesday, July 14th. So we're excited about that. Um, getting closer to a milestone. Um, as if you follow us, you know that we never had a fabulous wedding and we, we got married by the justice of peace. And then we had a cookout cause we were only 18 and 19 years old. So of course we didn't have a lot of money. And um, so we said we were going to have our wedding at five years. Then we said we were going to have a wedding at seven years. Then we said at 10 years. And, of course, none of that has happened. And so this is our 14th year. And we said that we were going to do a sweet 16. Yes. So hopefully within the next year we start planning that. And I know that I have a lot of uh, friends that are business owners like Shakira and mm -hmm. a lot of the people that can help us with that. So hopefully this COVID-19 really does, you know, 
fade off and so that we can start making those planning and arrangements and networking and teaming with some of you to make our sweet 16 wedding come true big facts yes um (laughs) but um so um so about boundaries and relationships i think boundaries is one of those things that kind of sneak up on couples Mm -hmm. is usually only discussed after something has happened right why are you studying my phone no go ahead babe talk um usually uh, people start talking about boundaries and their expectations in the relationship when things has happened or something bad has happened i don't i'm not sure of how many couples actually you know start out maybe court or date and start laying those boundaries what do you think about that yeah um you know uh, because we've talked about this before um in relationships we really do do relationships from a about of self expectation like I expect you from myself to do what I think you should do and handle me how I think you should handle me mm-hmm. without setting those expectations in the beginning. And, you know, ex- ex- expectations can be used synonymously with boundaries, of course. But I I'm supposed to be communicating that with you. And very, very rarely um, in a lot of conversations that we have with couples, they don't set certain boundaries or expectations in the beginning uh, and don't give their their mate or their partner a fair chance to actually meet or line up to said boundaries. And you know, just to add to that, I don't think it's just, you just can't give the boundaries in the beginning. Right. I think those boundaries should be a part of constant conversations because we change. I change several times Ooh, in the relationship. You brought something back up just now. You change several times. What? No, no, go ahead. You change several times out the relationship. So <clears throat> because we're constantly evolving, uh, new situations are happening, your boundaries change, the line move. And things like that. That's all I have. What were you thinking? Well, because you said what you said about um, evolving in a relationship. Dang. Setting boundaries can be a good thing. But bringing remembering a conversation I had with a a brother of mine that it can be a bad thing. Also, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about boundaries, healthy boundaries and unhealthy boundaries, some codependency boundaries that cause issues in relationships we're going to yeah. delve into all of that okay. today all right. uh, so bringing you this information i reviewed a few articles and two of the articles because i'm going to be quoting a lot from them i want to go ahead and cite them you know give people props um neither one of them had authors but one of them is called 15 signs of unhealthy boundaries um it was published by habits for well-being and also setting boundaries in a relationship that is published by break the cycle and um so the definition of a boundary you know i like definitions Yes, um, the line that marks the limits is the dividing line. You know, you know, don't, you know. Every time I think about, I think about somebody putting their foot in the sand. <laughs> yeah. That's what I did on the uh, picture. Like, don't cross this line. Right. And I think it was like Bugs Bunny or somebody. Or one of those cartoons. He just kept drawing the <laughs> stick and the thing keeps coming over you. And then unhealthy boundaries um, involve a disregard. Listen, a disregard for your own. Mm. Or others values, wants, needs, and limits. And that's what I really want to focus on tonight. So I want to see how this conversation goes. Because people talk about boundaries and expectations all the time. But people don't point out when they're unhealthy. And people don't point out when, you know, that there's issues. Or and people don't notice when they're the problem of why the boundary is Is there. there, You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So, yeah, that's good. So throughout this conversation, please feel free to be a part of the conversation. Um, You know, put comments in. We will read the comments and just be a part of the dialogue, if you will. Absolutely. So there are a lot of misconceptions about what boundaries are and what it should look like in a relationship. And boundaries are very, very subjective, meaning they for personal interpretation. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of hard, especially because it's in that person's head of what that boundary should look, look like, like exactly. and we do when i mean we i mean us as people we feel as though if someone's our, our boyfriend our girlfriend our husband our wife our mom our sister our brother we feel as though that they should know us and and, and you know in a and know the boundary you know right. what i'm saying like um i have an issue with boundaries i'm not even gonna lie um <clears throat> i speak on it <laughs> I have an issue. I do not. A lot of for the people in the back. I do not. I do have an issue with respecting some of Jonathan's boundaries. <laughs> oh, my God. I do. I feel like his socks 
are our socks. Oh my god! <laughs> well, some days Whoa. I have this mood where I just want one of his socks. They're thicker. They come more comfortable. I mean, what I look like buying knee high socks? What do you call little socks? Tube socks? Tube socks? Yeah. What I look like buying tube socks They're my for work me? Socks. Yeah, I don't. I don't buy tube socks for me. They're knee high socks. They're like, not <laughs> knee high. On, they may come knee high on you because you little, but they are tube socks, um, madam. John then always gets mad at me for going to his socks drawer. Um, so I buy like the no show socks. So when I I've been exercising a lot more, you know. You sure so, have been um, my, that thing right. my socks always slide in my shoes when I'm running or jogging or walking. So I start wearing his socks. He don't like that. Um. What else? <laughs> um, his side of the bed. Yes. He doesn't like me on his side of the bed. Uh, yeah. I feel like it's our bed. Uh, uh, it is our bed, um, but we never mind. Yeah. Um, uh, these, I know they're not the most healthiest things to drink, but I do partake from time to time in energy drinks. And um, I can't open an energy drink <laughs> without me getting a sip. Without her getting a sip. Well, because I, I can't really drink a whole one unless it's a smaller can. And he doesn't like me to open it and put it back in the refrigerator. Because it gets flat. So, when I hear that, that's just, <laughs> like, get a sip. <laughs> you know? Or or the typical, you know, thing that women do in relationships. What? And yes, I'm going to say this. Is, what? Anyway, the food thing. You know? We're not my, talking about food. Well, I like my food to be my food. But she has to try my food and eat my food <laughs> or come on my plate. And she can have food right in front of her, literally. That's not a fair boundary. Because if we going to bring up food now. as a boundary. Slow your roll. I had some slow, Jim and Nick's slow your roll. in the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, slow your roll. Slow your roll. And I woke up, my Geminix was gone. So I don't know how much boundaries you really Bro, need. Bro, have you guys ever had <laughs> those muffins? Or or whatever. The bi- I don't know what they call. <sighs> but I had six. You know, I ate like two. <sighs> you know, it was a busy day. Oh you know, I had them in the refrigerator. Oh my God. Um, we all went to bed, I thought. Um, I'm having a moment, y'all. And... So. Um, I don't know. I woke up the next morning and I was like, okay, and boom, let me go get my thing. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Go ahead. No, I'm having a Yeah, you. and it was like, oh, let me get my thing. Let me get my biscuits. And he told me he ate them. And I was just like, you owe me. Like, for real. <laughs> and but you still on, hold ain't on, get hold it. On, hold on, hold on. To be fair, you're right. And I did promise that I was going to go the next day and get it. And you, I still you owe then. you. Right? But can I just make mention as to how you felt being betrayed when you woke up that <laughs> morning is how I feel every time you go in my sock drawer and I, you didn't ask me mm-hmm. when you just grab my, my energy drink and drink it. You eat my I food. I asked though. Babe, no, you don't. No, some, most of the Sometimes time. you do. But even if I say no, what do you do? <laughs> we'll be, uh, be honest in front of these people. I either pout till I get it mm-hmm. if you say no. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I just get it because it's just Jonathan, and that's just that. Right. But you have, but you don't. It, and I always have to fold. No, not always. Okay. Not always. Okay. But yeah, so that's pretty much how that goes. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So <laughs> Megan said, "We just want the taste." I understand that, yeah, sis. That's I get it. it. It's like why, 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 why should I buy it? And knowing that I'm not going to finish it, God, I swear. I don't know. I y'all think I'm being resourceful. Y'all so anyways, kill me. So, um, so a relationship can't be healthy until both partners and people, you know, understand <laughs> the boundaries clearly, and other the other person respects those boundaries. Unfortunately, some people have some unhealthy boundaries. So, um, the reason why boundaries are important. I mean, me and Jonathan just was laughing about you know some surface type boundaries but when it comes to serious boundaries we really do try to uh respect the, each other's boundaries, boundaries when it comes yeah. to certain things like that um but so the reason why boundaries are important is because number one they can define who you are right you know they they have a story most of the time some of us have went through certain things in our relationships and in our past and in our upbringing that we have those boundaries there to protect the real us right you know and sometimes the other person may not understand it um like i have this thing where i don't know i have many things but i don't know i have this thing where 
my child, my children here have to look a certain way. You know, Jonathan cannot post a picture of my kids if their hair is not a certain way. But that comes from a certain place. That comes place. from a place where when I was little there and I go. used to walk around looking like a little chicken head because I used to be outside playing all the time and I got teased a lot. So that's a sore space for me. So I don't go. want my children to endure that. So it's like you cannot post them looking like that. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So. It's a boundary. He didn't understand it at first, maybe because I didn't articulate it. Or he thought the hairstyle was decent. And sometimes it'd be okay, but, you know, I want my children to be seen and go outside looking a certain way because I don't want them to have to do a certain thing. But things. I understand that because there's certain things that I carry as boundaries pertaining to our kids as well. Being that, you know, I wasn't raised in the most, um, you know, foreseen circumstances. You know, mom did exactly you know, the best that she could, you know, was raised on a project, didn't have a whole lot, you know, food stamps, welfare, all the good nine yards. Grateful for the experience and the upbringing because it taught me a lot. But I also made that it made a vow that I would want our kids to not have to ever experience that. So I made that a boundary as well that we would never have to go through that. So they would experience that. Not saying that it was bad, but I just wanted a, something better for them yeah and that's something that i i still struggle with because i don't understand sometimes why he buy the things for them that he does right. i feel as though they because they're girls because you know my son ain't old enough to make certain demands actually he's he's getting up there well asking no for video no. games yeah, so, yeah he is but as soon as he stopped being hard on his shoes <laughs> 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 then I would make those accommodations. Yeah, so it's like he does, he buys them things and he takes care of them in a way and it comes from a place of his upbringing. So yeah. even though I don't, I think the girls be pushing over on him, you know, I just don't say anything they, they or don't. I try not they to. They don't, they just don't say no, you don't have to. You can't lot. see it. No, I see it. No, I do. Because they don't ask. They just don't say no when I offer. Okay, we'll see. Actually, Naya did do that. What? When I, because I I bought Jayla some new Crocs, uh -huh. and I bought me some new Crocs, and I was saying to save on shipping, I use that as an excuse. It was already free shipping. I said <laughs> I'm gonna get y'all a pair, you know, to save on shipping. What color do you guys want? Well, they didn't have the kind color that I wanted, so she said, Daddy, do I even have to get anything? I said, Well, if we can't find Crocs, pick another shoe. She said, Well, I really don't want anything. I said, you sure? And I kept pushing. She's like me. Pushing, and she said, Daddy, I I mean, if I don't. If I don't want it, I don't have to get it, right? I was like, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. You know? But I wanted to get her something. Yeah. But she said no. See? Booyah. So they don't work you all the time. But if school was in session, <laughs> it would be a whole <laughs> different bar game. Um, so but also, um, boundaries are also important because it protects your time and energy. And right. I think out of most of these, these are this is like one of my top one. Um, protecting your time and energy is so important and i think a lot of people run into a relationship issues when they are flexible with their time and energy and investing in people that they really feel as though or they already had some reserve for or they already saw signs and they give their time and energy not really noticing that they are you know erasing a boundary and putting themselves in vulnerable situations mm-hmm you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Yeah, and I, um, I see that time and time again. Um, maybe it's because of the things that I watch. You know, I watch a lot of divorce court. I watch a lot of paternity court and just shows like that because I'm really studying how people do relationships, and that's one free avenue to do it. But I really see when relationships go bad, it's usually the person you know, either lessen their standard or move right. the boundary line exactly. and then gets offended when that person – wasted their time or wasted their energy and you know and they done exhaust themselves or or what about if to to add on and piggyback off what you're saying what about in, in an exhaustive state of diminishing or relinquishing how they really feel about a certain boundary they actually harbor that yeah and then it builds into a level of resentment yes because they don't effectively communicate that they don't really like that said set boundary that you're trying to uh, establish yeah and instead of communicating because you don't want to offend or you trying to stay stay away from an argument, you know, you you harbor that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, resentment builds up and then you start to look at the person differently. Communication lines break down and then the relationship is over. 
you know, those, those are unhealthy boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, and we just have to be very careful with that. We really do. Uh huh. And boundaries also serve a purpose of providing a clear moral compass. Um, everybody don't have the same moral compass when it comes to certain things. Um, I do. I have seen a lot of that where it comes when people are in relationship, when it comes to sex, um, when it comes. That's to, a big one. Yeah, when it comes to you know, the, you know. I'm gonna let you finish, but I want to go right back there. Well, so go ahead. Before, okay, boom. <sighs> Boundaries with sex in a relationship. You talked about evolving earlier. Yeah. And this is why I said, ooh. So, what if you've been married mm -hmm. for 15 years? Mm -hmm. In the midst of your marriage, you and your partner have, me and you, mm -hmm. have been having sex and, you know, doing what married people do in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And the topic of oral sex comes up mm -hmm. you tell me one day i don't think i like it like i used to like it anymore yeah i said well hey you didn't have a problem with it. as a matter of fact when we were dating you do it all the time keep my attention mm -hmm. right boom you say okay yeah i do it but i won't really do it that often a few months down the line that transitions into i don't feel valued as a woman Mm -hmm. any more by doing it and you stop yeah but that is something that is really important to me uh-huh how do you suggest that i respect you in your stance but also maintain how i feel in the situation um that's something that we talk about using me and you as an example we got to work that out um, okay. We have to decide. All right. Go okay. Ahead. Because I have a I, I have a boundary now that I have developed because I have evolved and my mindset has changed and that's something that you require in a relationship. Well, then we have to see if that becomes a deal breaker. After and fifteen years. After fifteen years, if that because you you got to remember even the 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 space me and you give in our marriage the freedom to continuously to choose right. and the freedom to evolve. Right. And if we are going to respect each other and give each other the freedom to choose right. and the freedom to evolve, then it's either a compromise. And if there can't be a compromise because that has become a value, then th they grew apart. Dang. 15 years? Well, the, you know, it's, it's not. You can't look at it as 15 Well, years. I have to. Okay. Well, what would make that woman not want to partake in that activity any longer could there be an arterial motive there there is not necessarily an arterial motor motive but just thinking about me and the different transitions that i had throughout our marriage when it came to sensitive topics like that um some things i did at the beginning that, that i don't do now and some things that i do now that i didn't do at the beginning but so happened that we evolved and was able to work with one another but all couples may not can't do that and boundaries still have to be respected you know ask her questions what happened why do she why? feel devalued exactly. you know what are those things that have influenced that where did that come from they I, can have serious conversation is there hurt there is there traumatic there i asked him if he did anything i said because women are pretty consistent if you unless and until you give them a reason to stop being consistent in their efforts of showing you love and pleasing you mm -hmm. you know usually when a woman does not feel safe mm -hmm. or secure they start to pull back yeah and draw away and i asked him i was very adamant i said brother are you sure you have not done anything he's like john i promise i did nothing but again we but all, that could we be lied. an issue that could be an issue <laughs> but that could be an issue right there the fact is that he didn't do anything does he show that he respects her after that act is done does he you know how do he treat her when that act is being performed you know, there's there's a lot they need to you know seek counseling on something if this if it's the relationship that they do decide to still want. Absolutely, because yeah. they've been a long they've been together for a long time, married fifteen years together for like twenty or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so people have to be able to have a clear moral compass. Like it could be anything. It could be you being dishonest in your work field, and I just can't be with you with that. Like say you smuggling money or something or. Or mm. maybe you, I don't know, doing something unethical and and it's against my boundary. And you'd be like, well, you don't have to be with me. Or like, I don't know, it, it could just be messing with my moral compass. Right. And you have to choose. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is that fair to him, though? Well, but that's the thing. When you're in a relationship, we can't say that you're one. And then you do whatever you want to do. Because whatever you do jeopardize my stability. That's if true. you out, you know, selling drugs or bezeling money or robbing people or whatever. I don't know. I just had came up with those extreme examples. <laughs> but whatever it is, everything that you do jeopardize me. And right. if that's not fitting to my moral compass, then you're not really protecting me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So... It's sense. a lot. Uh, Megan said, my husband said he was just say okay, but I think he's only saying that because it's a hypothetical. It's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, sis. Maybe. <laughs> you know, you, you don't know until you, you, you know, you're in the fire. I so. know, right? Um, so another part of the boundaries um, that are reason why boundaries are important because it's a practice of self care and self respect. Mm. And if you realize those. Those first examples that we gave were all leading to self-care and self-respect. That's true. Yeah, because if I'm going to be tied to you in my relationship, you know, you become a part of my self-respect and self-care to a certain extent. So if I don't respect your values, then I'm not valuing you. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then the last one that I jot down was um, make space for healthy interactions. So if you are not... Um, you know, compliant with my boundaries, we, we're not having a healthy relationship. Right. There's distrust. There's other things. You know, there's just, there's no way it could be a safe relationship if you don't respect boundaries. Because if you don't respect the boundaries, then in essence, you're saying, I don't respect who you, you are. You are as a person. Yeah. That's a really, really good point. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And so a person, when you don't, when you disregard how they feel about something or you disregard their boundaries, you know, the value of them as a person really does go out of the window. Um, and that leaves you in a very vulnerable place because, you know, you want to be respected in the relationship with somebody that you're in with. Um, and if that person just dismisses everything that is important to you or that is that that you value. You know, you, you it puts you in a bad space. And that's when the outside company, the outside energy comes in. Um, infidelity can happen. Emotional infidelity, physical infidelity can happen because people go to the places that they feel the most safe. Now, that's not saying that when they go to that place, they're going to find comfort and stay there because usually the grass is not always green on the other side. But it's up to those two people that is in the relationship especially for the one that's feeling dismissed to have that conversation to let that person know even if it's in a, a, a short bout of of anger anger is a healthy emotion if used correctly if used correctly keyword if used correctly even if it's in a short bout of anger to let that your your spouse or your partner know hey you're disrespecting my values and it's really affecting me you're not respecting my boundaries and make them listen but don't ever feel like you're isolated if you're not respected in where you feel like you should be and take the time to have the conversation you know make them listen but always stand there and fight for the relationship that's right so go ahead. You got some. So more now your moving to unhealthy boundaries, and to me, the healthy boundaries have speak loud because I didn't think of these on top of my head as unhealthy boundaries. Okay. So, um, so letting everyone know everything. Mm. Go ahead, cause you look. You about to choke. No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Um. So, um. One, one thing that's funny to me is that I try to be conscious of the things that I post on social media. Because I know how I am. You know, if I post something, you know, depends on how controversial my post may be. Oh, I don't God. know. I just, I just rather not say certain things on Facebook. I might share something and use an emoji, but I'm not going to like say, I just not. Because I understand that, you know, I have boundaries when it comes to that. Yes. Like, I, you know, I, in order for me to respect your boundary of what you believe and respect my boundary, what I believe, I just think that just certain things shouldn't be a shouldn't be said or yes. whatever right so when you're on social media and you're sharing your thoughts and your opinions about something you are removing a boundary <laughs> point blank period you uh. are exposing yourself you're being vulnerable and you're sharing your thoughts and you have erased the line 
of you know boundary and you are welcoming responses yes in spite what you may believe Believe. yes that may be your page but your page is a platform to share and display (laughs) your thoughts so when facebook asks you what's your thoughts and you say it you're inviting the world in in right so if you have a problem with a comment someone is saying to you after you have re- erased the line and you remove the line in the sand, which is to not post, you know, you're welcoming things in. So if you have problems with that, then it's an unhealthy boundary for you. So stop letting everyone know everything if you don't want the response to come with it. Big facts. One of my pet peeves is when people run to Facebook when they have problems in their relationship. I don't I don't like that. Now you would look at us and be like, Well, ain't that what y'all doing? Y'all on live and y'all just all transparent, y'all open and this and that and that and this. Different platform. Different different a different, different platform. Context, different, different context. Everything. And that's the point. When you run with the problem, you're not giving a wide enough you're not casting a wide enough net to provide context to what's going on. And you're letting people interpret through your discomfort and through your pain. Without you even taking the time to process and do the work, you know, you, we have to be careful with the energy that we actually are putting out there, especially on social media. You do. And you can't expect for somebody to read in between the lines or read in, in the lines of the context that you want them to read in. If all you do is go to Facebook and put your problems out there and just blast your information out there and just let let it be known. You're not doing it. Uh, for to to teach a lesson you're, you're not doing it to provide insight be fruitful you're not doing it some so somebody can glean from what you're trying to explain through your pain now lessons some of the greatest lessons i've learned came through pain mm-hmm. right but i'm not going to social media while i'm in the course of my pain before I've sat to learn the lesson and do the work and just blast everything out. Why you don't understand how people take on information and how that information is used to shape their perspective. You can share your pain, but make sure you give the proper context and perspective instead of just blasting your business out there, especially if you're in a relationship. That is the most dangerous thing that you can do. And one of the most pet peeves that that I think I have keep your business off of social media without providing context. If it's not to edify people, if it is not to teach people a lesson, and if it's not to have people eat off the, the fruit of your hardship, keep it off of social media, please. And then wonder why you cannot get people to take you out of a certain uh, site that you have posted on Facebook or a certain mindset that you have allowed them to understand of where you are and, uh, and how you've allowed them to measure you. Well, you put it out there. To be measured. To be measured. Yeah. Just keep it off. You're yeah. not doing any you're not doing yourself any justice. Well people look for that, you know, that support, that that affirmation. Um, you know, people are seeking comfort. And at that point you need to seek a me- mentor or a yes. coach oh, thank or you. someone that can help sharpen you. Yes, social um, media ain't the answer. So um the next one is a un- so Oh that- Megan said something. Oh Megan, yeah, yeah. She said my husband and I have an agreement not to post negatively about each other on Facebook. Great Facts. agreement. Great agreement. Kudos to y'all. Yeah, man. That is uh, signs of healthy boundaries. Yeah, man. You know, that's how you keep your ship steady. <laughs> you know, uh, social media can bring uh, rocky waves. That's not social current... media. It's people. Okay, sorry. People. You're right. Because social media is just a tool. Yep. Okay, you're right. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um. So another unhealthy boundary is falling in love with new acquaintances. You know, for some people... Fall in love too fast or just think that they're in love and things like that. Um, It's unhealthy in mm. certain extent. So um, are you saying that there's a time frame for somebody no, to engage in relationships? I'm not saying it's a time frame. Okay. I'm saying that people should know who they are and okay. know their idiosyncrasies and know their weaknesses so that they can make better judgments about relationships. Okay. You know, um, I don't know. I have kids. So Frozen, for example. (laughs) (laughs) Anna met this prince. 
her and the prince were in love. Day one, they getting engaged. Elsa wasn't having it. <laughs> to come to find out, dude had ulterior motives the whole time. The whole time. So I said that example, not necessarily be funny, but how many women do that? How many women get in relationships with new guys that say the right thing at the right time? Date number two, they're intimate, and they expect the call back. And nothing happens. Nothing happens. Or then they do it again. They meet another guy and they go on two dates this time. And then no callback mm. after intercourse or whatever. It's like you have to know you and know your patterns and know your cycle and understand that that is an unhealthy boundary. Like you need to have serious boundaries. So I don't care if you got to watch think like a man and do a 90 day rule or whatever but it's a form of boundary to protect you from you right to, at some points you know right you know um some guys because it's not just women that do that some guys are really looking for love and they go and they buy the girl everything and next thing you know she only want money mm. and they want to dump her because she don't speak to your needs but then go in another relationship and buy the girl everything 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 and then be like oh but she doesn't love me well you have an unhealthy boundary right so it's like you know know yourself yeah and know if you are a giver or you you know however you are then you need to set up accountability partners you need to have those boundaries in place know how to communicate those boundaries and don't feel bad that you have those boundaries because they protect you yes. setting up those type of boundaries give you the self-respect and self-care that's necessary it protects your time and energy which is necessary so i don't know you absolutely have something, something. no you had it on point Okay, so another thing is letting other people direct your life is an unhealthy boundary. And um, hmm. I had that was an issue for me mm. in our marriage. Mm. Um, okay, <laughs> it was okay. And the reason why I say that it was no fault of Jonathan is because for me, I had that I realized that was an unhealthy boundary for me because. It took me way too long to be fine with me being myself. Mm -hmm. um, I love Jonathan. Mm. The Say world knows thing. I love Say him. That thing, girl. And um, <laughs> I love him for his aspirations. I love him just for who he is. Um, I think that he can do anything in the world. Um, I like the way he talks. I like I like his level of intellect. I like that he's always teaching me something new. Um, he has certain characteristics and abilities that I aspire to have, and I covet those things because, ooh, I wish I could deliver this like you, and ooh, I wish I can do that like you, to the point where I minimized myself and my gifts, and whatever Jonathan wanted to do, it was like I would play the background role because I wanted, in my insecurity, you know, I wanted to make sure... I support him and I wasn't paying enough care to myself. So I had this unhealthy thing that whatever Jonathan wants, he didn't even have to communicate it. I'm just going to do like, you know, you want to move to Tennessee? Okay, we going. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that we did. I know. You know, whatever move you make, oh, we start in the kettle corn business. Okay, we going to do this. And whatever it was, it wasn't anything that he forced upon me. It wasn't. That, it was a couple of things. I wanted to make sure that I was submissive because I had years of being unsubmissive. I wanted to make sure that I was being that supportive wife because it was the time period that I wasn't supportive. And I didn't realize that I, too, formed an unhealthy boundary. Whereas, wherever Jonathan point the sail, it was like Eva was right there. Um, and that was unhealthy for me because I lost sight of me being in awe with who he is who he was and still is. So when we have good people in our lives that, you know, are awesome, who we think are amazing, you know, don't lose sight of you, you know, right. find out how to compliment them and still keep you, still keep who you are in the process. Right. I went through losing that not only with him, I went through losing that with the church, you know, um, being in church and just losing who I was in the process. I know I keep hitting that. I know, baby. Um, so, I'm just trying to, and it took me years, actually just the last four years, that I'm actually finding out more and more of who I am and my capabilities and what I'm able to do and thing. Like, dang, I got gifts too, exactly. you know? <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't hone on those things. I didn't really look at those things because I was enamored by his gifts and when he got on platforms and when he spoke and how he dealt with the kids and how he always seemed to know the right answer to everything. <laughs> I just couldn't get that, so I... <laughs> 
subconsciously thought less of myself. And as long as I could, you know, stand in Jonathan's shadows that I was okay, you know, until Jonathan needed me to stand on my own and I didn't know how to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that was but, an unhealthy boundary. But but even even in that, you know, when it came time for you to stand uh, on your own and you communicated with me that that's how you felt, um, you know, it, it wasn't a time for me to feel, you know, sorry for you or feel bad or, you know, for me to feel guilty because I didn't even understand that that was going on at the time. Yeah. Instead, you know, I made sure that I spoke your strengths and spoke what I knew that you were able to do and spoke what I believed that you were capable of doing. And I'm intentional about celebrating and, and, and congratulating um, you on, on your accomplishments or when you do give an awesome breakdown or awesome speech or how meticulous you are uh, with certain things and details and just just how awesome you are. I became a really good cheerleader. You have. You know, but that's because that's where valuing your boundaries uh-huh. come into play. Yeah. And making sure that I don't diminish how you feel about something um, by saying, oh, you'll be all right. Or yeah. Eva get it. Yeah. Or she'll learn or that's just how women are, because a lot of men do say that, you know, but you have to understand that this is a, a whole person right here. Yeah. You know, she is more than just her gender. She is a human being that has emotions, a perspective and, you know, how, how she sees the world. And I just have to make sure that I am ever so careful in men. If you hear me, just make sure you're ever so careful to not only see your your wife or your your um your woman or uh, your fiance this is a relationships more than just uh, about marriage make sure you don't just see the women that you love out of one lens be able to know how to adjust your lens when it needs to be adjusted yeah you know because when that came about and it was time for you to stand and you were in a moment of weakness i had to adjust my lens and i i keep adjusting it yeah you know, because I'm still learning and evolving. Still, you did exactly. go through a period of um uh of uh what word I was looking for separation anxiety. Um, so when, oh, you mean uh, when you had to go back to work? Not only that, but uh, like everything, like we would do a lot of things together. And Jonathan is a homebody, oh, and yeah. I would be a homebody with him. But now I realize I like going out the house and. He'd be like, where you going? Man, where you going? <laughs> like, 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 come on, man. Just like, like you going out. again? I'm like, no, I want to go hang out with my friends. I want to go to Shea House. I want to do all these things now. Like, you ain't used to do this or whatever. But, you know, I'm just spreading my wings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started traveling for work. He'd be like, oh, you got to go somewhere gotta again? Go again? Like, where you leaving Jesus before? Christ. You know, it's like, I'm just doing things that I haven't done before and, you got a little separation anxiety sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> because you, and then like certain things, like now I'm eating different things and I like different things. Like, uh, um, taco boy. You yeah. Say that? He, yeah. T- John didn't like the fact that I like taco boy. He doesn't because it's always been, I eat what he eat. I go where he goes and I like what he likes. And now that I am evolving and don't necessarily like what he likes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and but, I'm liking my own stuff. But I support you in you that. Did, you did take said, me to Taco Boy. Hey, yeah, and I said afterwards, after I ate that nasty taco, <laughs> I said, you can like it. Yeah. You can eat it. It was hard for you. I just won't. But when I asked for it again, you didn't necessarily want to go. I didn't want to go, but yeah. you could have went. But you didn't like the fact that I wanted it. You kept talking about how you make tacos better no, than Taco hold, Boy. No, pause. Uh, <laughs> let's, put, let's pause this for a second. I didn't like the fact... That her and my girls were saying that Taco Boy was better than my fish tacos. It's okay. That's what I didn't like. It's okay. We used to thought your tacos was it. It is it. But we are growing outside <laughs> of you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Marquis. Marquis <laughs> says she loves how open I am. I really try to be. There's it's no other yeah, way to y'all be. Y'all get on my nerves. Yeah, man. but we, we're evolving. Okay, so another one is, so it goes hand in hand with letting someone else define your reality. You know, Mm. Um, Mm. yeah, a lot of people deal with that mostly in abusive relationships, Relationships. Um, make people believe that if you leave them, you, you won't be good or you won't make it or, or nobody else will want to, or you need need them. Yeah. Yeah. Those aren't healthy boundaries. If you believe things like that, um, 
uh, touching another person without asking. So I actually had talked to a female before. Um, she married. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, uh, I don't know how to say it, but then I do know how to say it. Well, basically, um, she had a boundary with her husband. You know, she didn't want him to touch her or he had to initiate sex a certain way. Um, so what did she, what traumatic did she experience? Um, we didn't go into details about that because we were in a uh, in a conversation with a lot of other people. Okay, but basically, um, like how you know we can cuddle and mm-hmm. you know you just feel on me or move on me or whatever. Yeah. He can't. She he he can't do that, and he had a hard time. Like I just can't touch my wife. I always gotta ask permission to touch my wife. Well, she didn't. She she's she not being transparent. She probably isn't. And we didn't continue the conversation. But that's just that's coming. That's that coming I from a certain place. Because some people feel like in a marriage, you know, your body is belongs to me, and well, my body belongs in, to you. In essence, in essence, but, that's how it's, that's how it should be. In essence, yeah. But that's not always reality because we all battle or have gone through certain things that you know have brought certain levels of ptsd that we still struggle with right and if that was something that was traumatic for her that still that she was struggling with and you know it's not that she didn't want him it's just that those things were triggers yeah you know we all have our certain triggers that triggers post-traumatic stress um that she just should have communicated that but if i'm a man in that marriage though Huh? Like I don't know what it was like before marriage. I don't know if they didn't live together before marriage to experience that. But those are, you know, those are things you're supposed to hash out. Though. Yeah. Because I would have, I would have felt like you didn't want me. That's what he felt. Yeah. As a man, I would, I, I don't, I would feel like you didn't want me. Like I wasn't worthy. You know mm-hmm. that we, 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 we're macho. Yes, we have egos. Yes, we like to be tough. We like to be rough or whatever you want. But we still have emotions and we have feelings. Yeah. And men, especially husbands, mm-hmm. we like to know that our wives need us and want us and desire us. And if we feel like we don't have that with you, it doesn't make us feel like we're qualified yeah. to be husbands. Yeah. You know, it's hurtful. I feel for the brother. I just, man, mm. have those hard, please have those conversations. You know, set those boundaries. If that's a boundary, it's, it's a real life boundary because abuse is a real thing. It is. I understand how uncomfortable it may be, but you have to have those conversations, especially if you are open to love again. Yeah. If you're not open to love, then you don't have to worry about that. You still have to talk to, you know, go through your own healing, you know, your own therapy. And uh, you can do that with your, for, by yourself. But if you're open to love again, yeah. the person that you're in a relationship with deserves to know what your triggers are. And that's also practicing self-care. Yeah, like, is. you know, you just... You just have to. So, yeah. Um, Akira said that sexual abuse trauma can definitely lead to intimacy issues in a relationship. Absolutely. And it's a real thing. It is. It's a real thing. And again, going back to respecting boundaries. If you have that conversation with the person you're in a relationship with, it is up to that person at that time to value your experience Mm -hmm. and respect your boundaries. That's right. Uh, My wife and I are a big advocate. Uh, We believe in healing together. Right. And if she went through something like that and she actually took the time to communicate that with me, then I would have to value and respect her experience and honor her boundary, but also be the person that's there to help her heal. And we heal together. Right. Together. But without that communication, without those boundaries set, that there could be no possibility. I think sometimes people feel embarrassed, um, you know. They don't want to be looked at differently. You know, I think those type of fear mm-hmm. paralyzes them from communicating. And I think that sometimes people feel that. they're going to leave and they don't feel that. safe. But I, the, the the most healthiest place that I have been is when I have been honest with my wife about who I really am as a person. Instead of hiding, instead of masking and instead of pretending. That it's, it's, it's some people are just not ready to deal with it because it just opens up so much. And I have learned that some people, when it comes to sexual trauma and even abuse, like physical abuse and things like that, mm-hmm. um, they forget about it for years and it can just it did trigger pop back up. You're Something uh, right. trigger is it, and it's just 
you know. But again, going back to the traumatic experience, mm-hmm. you can't heal what is not revealed. That's fact. You can't expect to continue to push your your what what happened, your traumatic experience, back and back and on, on a way because you don't know what may happen that may trigger it, and it comes right back up. And you may have been able to brush it away to the side when you were younger, but now that you've gone through so many other things, oh, and you stresses, got your own children, and you got your own children. Now that burden of what happened in your youth now affects you even or in your worse, adult life. or even in your adult yeah. life. So you can't heal what's not revealed. So you have to reveal it and do start doing the work on yourself. Yeah, man, to heal past it. Okay, and we're almost done. Okay. Um, another uh, yeah, almost unhealthy quick. boundary is, you know, allowing another person to take what they want from you. Or, you know, giving just to give and you really don't want to give. Um, I see, I don't know if men do that as much as women. But I have seen where women knowing, knowing they're being taken advantage of and still allow whatever it is to be taken away from them. Um or giving when they know they're being taken advantage of and still giving in spite of in the hopes of retaining that person or that person to love you or gain a love for you. Um, women do that in the form of having babies for men. Um, you know, giving their bodies, having a baby, hoping that if I give him this child, mm. he'll do right by me and mm. love me. Um, money, um house uh gifts people feel as though if i give you this you're going to come back to me mm. or you know you're going to want me if i give you this no, it's and, never, it never works and some people bend their boundaries and sexual favors yeah. you know so to speak and you know um if i do this has, for him yeah, he'll like me yeah he'll like me or he would no. or he would want me or whatever no. um uh-uh. i teach we teach our daughters uh that value starts on the inside and if somebody wants to get to know you, they need to learn your values, which is who you are as a person. And you got to communicate and them you first. have to communicate those and stand to them. And don't ever think that you ever coming outside of what you believe outside of your value set that is going to make somebody believe or, or like you even more. They have to like who you are as a person. Yeah. You know, and if they don't like who you are as a person, nothing that you can do for that person will can't change their perspe- perception of you. You know, you can't gain someone's like or love by diminishing who you are as a person right and that's facts because one day you're gonna wake up yeah hopefully if you if you're growing you're gonna wake up yes. and you're not gonna know who you are and they're not gonna know who you are and then they're gonna be like why are you changing like what happened like this, this isn't you <laughs> this ain't you and you'll be like this never was me yeah you know um, oh, so that could have been the situation with the brother I was talking about. Yeah, hmm. could have been. Um, so establishing healthy boundaries in relationship allows both uh, partners to feel safe. Um, it, it Not only just partners, with the, your family, friends, co-workers, whatever. Just make sure that you establish healthy boundaries. In order to establish those boundaries, you need to be clear and honest with yourself. So you can be honest with other people. And... Um, um, uh, boundaries includes, you know, your feelings, your attitude, your beliefs, uh, behaviors, your choices, um, just limits. Boundaries includes your talents, thoughts, desires, your love, and your body. And I don't think people think that they have boundaries for all those things. Right. But they do. We always speak about the boundaries in, in love because you'd be like, oh, if you cheat on me or, oh, if you do this to me or those are deal breakers, you know, you're saying a boundaries. But people don't really talk about boundaries of attitudes. But I think you guys have boundaries when it comes to attitudes. We do. Like, you we know. We absolutely do. You can elaborate on that. Uh, men, men do not, l- l- we're not fond of disrespect. And it's not a dominating attitude. You know, it's not a, it's not coming from a place of misogyny. We just don't like to be disrespected as men. Mm-hmm. And when like emasculation, yeah, it feel it's emasculating mm-hmm. as a man, especially when if a woman uh, immediately will snap back or immediately will show attitude mm-hmm. or immediately will come back with with a rebuttal. Mm-hmm. It's very demeaning and it's very emasculating. We feel like. You, you don't give us the space to stand within our manhood and mm. within our masculinity. Uh, the old school, and I'm not 
seeing this to say that we should go back to that. I'm just using this as an example. But um, I was told that old school women would just let their husbands talk just to let let them talk. Let them believe that they are right. (laughs) Let them stay in that. But then they behind in the background are doing what is right. They let them believe that they're or they can frame their wording in such a way. That's to, just, you're just being to, tactful. Yeah, to be tactful, tactful enough to make to make it seem like it's the husband's idea or it's the husband's words. Really, it's them giving it to him and then just having the husband regurgitate exactly what they just said. But it, it's it was it was it was done in, with poise. Yeah, you know, uh, because men we just have to stand with their own masculinity, even when we're wrong sometimes. Yeah, and we don't like the attitude. <laughs> Why are you making that face? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's, I'm just thinking. It's, it's, but it's not to take away the voice of women. My wife has a voice, and I will say this openly, publicly, and I will say this any time uh, any, to anyone. My wife has a voice. I do. It's not because I allow her to have a voice. Mm-mm. It's because she is her own woman mm-hmm. with her own mind. Mm-hmm. And in all actuality, if we want to look at it from an economic standpoint, this woman don't need me. Just being honest. I provide for her in other ways outside of finances, even though we work as a team in that area. But still, she 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 doesn't need me in that regard. So when I look at it big picture and I make sure that my perspective is not always narrow, because sometimes men, we can be that way. This woman has a voice and her voice has to be heard and it deserves to be heard and it needs to be heard. And I can't dim her light because my ego is bruised. Right. And I don't have an attitude towards you. On the things because I don't may not need you in certain areas. You know, I'm not degrading you or talking down to you or I don't have an attitude. And you do have some females that just really just walk with a chip on their shoulder in their relationship all the time. Like Exactly. Like chill out. out. Like, like why why you what's wrong? Just, what happened? But but <laughs> most of the time they're just protecting themselves. Right. Because, because they have been disrespected. Or some boundaries have been, been, you know, because they, you know, and then sometimes they're the problem with the boundaries. You exactly. know, you can't be mad at somebody if you give and give and give and they decide to take, take, take. Exactly. You know, or if you're allowing somebody to take advantage of you, um, you know, it's kind of your fault. You know, you can't take that on the next person if you don't introspect and, you know, deal with self or whatever. Um, another part of the values... Um, a, a part of boundaries that people have to pay attention to is the desires. Um, some people have different desires as they evolve in the relationship. Um, and um, I'll be transparent again about one of our issues. Okay. So um, those of those of you that knew that me and Jonathan was like, you know, hardcore, we just didn't do a lot of things um, because of our religious belief at we the time. We were hardcore what? Well, you t- you oh. said you know, in religion, we were okay. just, <laughs> yeah, we were just like, hardcore. rock and roll. We <laughs> just, we just didn't do certain things. And when Jonathan began to get a taste for bourbon and he wanted to try cigars every now and then I was like, Whoa, Whoa. who is this guy? Like, Whoa. uh, like that's nasty. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, Oh, uh, like, like, oh my gosh. Like, like, <laughs> like you really going to smoke a cigar? Like, I like him. Like, ew, like, you're not kissing me, <laughs> you know, ooh, you stink, um, get from by me, um, I just didn't like it, but he was gaining a taste for it, and I'm like, okay, um, it's just, we just can't do this, or when he started drinking bourbon, it was like, oh my god, you stink, don't come by me, don't touch me, don't, you know, <laughs> Don't, I really like bourbon. Don't don't mess with me. And we literally had to have a conversation because I didn't realize my words was really starting to bother him every time I said that. And he was just basically saying, you know, are you going to accept me for who I am? Because I realize that I do like this. Right. And every time I do something, it's not like I do this every day, which he don't. I mean, he may have a cigar once every few months, if that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not often. Yeah, I can't, I can't, the last time was a couple months ago. Yeah, and I took a picture of it. You were sitting <laughs> in the backyard. But I have to understand that he was evolving, and we had to set boundaries only outside, you know, you know, right. you know. Um, I'm, right. I'm yeah. not around. And when he, I come in, I go straight to the shower. shower. 
um, boom, because we had to find a way to respect each other. His desires had changed. He wanted to try new things. Me, I just wasn't for it. And I just had to learn to love him and understand that he does something that I don't necessarily, I don't do. And I still had to love him and not look at him disgusting or make him feel bad because he likes a taste now that he didn't like the rest of our 15 years together. Yeah, I evolved. Yeah. You couldn't get me to drink bourbon in early 20s, Jonathan? Uh Uh-uh. I was on vodka. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, but I had to respect his desires and we had to come together. But it took him being honest about my comments, which I didn't even know was bothering him, you know, to me, if if you stink to me, you stink, you know. But it became I didn't realize I was saying it so much that I was making him feel some type of way. Gotcha. So we had to talk about it. But um, I think that's it, you know. Yeah. Communicate your thoughts and the way you feel to one another. Never assume the other person understands your feelings without you communicating them. Take responsibility for your own actions. Are you the one that's creating the unhealthy boundaries or the unhealthy actions? Right. And know when it's time to move on if necessary. Right. What you got? That's a hard one, though. But, yes. No, I went to move on? Yeah. Why? That's a hard but it's, it's No. It's, it's just no, a hard No, go one. ahead. No, because it's like, I don't, I don't, I want to see successful relationships. And I want to see people happy. And I, I want to see them work. And I want to see them fight for a one another. A relationship that ends, but is it necessarily unsuccessful? That's what I was about to say. Oh, okay, go ahead. But with us evolving and understanding and learning um you know people as we just we talk and we we coach people through their issues um you know not every relationship that ends doesn't mean that it wasn't successful the key that helped me teach that is was there a lesson that was learned at the end of it yeah that that's what helped me to understand that the lesson was bigger than the loss of the relationship yeah because that helped them to become a better person and help them to apply what they learn to their next relationship. So yes, that last point that my wife gave is you know knowing when to leave. Um, it's it, it, it is it is pivotal. I mean, you know? yeah, I it mean, is. to anything has a beginning and the end. You know, yeah. some people go to death do our part, and we celebrate those relationships that make it that way. And then some people relationships end. You know, before then and. It doesn't always have to be an unsuccessful relationship. Now, the only example that I have, because I did look at this um, in me, like, researching the topic or whatever. Um, So everybody know that Jeff Bezos, you know, him and his wife, um, uh, Mackenzie, um, did get divorced. Right. Um, But I don't know if it's facetious or superficial or whatever, but they really felt like their journey... In their marriage of 20, what, three years or whatever? It's 22 or 23 years. Yeah, yeah something like that. was really at an end. And the, they realized that the marriage was over before it actually, you know, was publicly over. But they're still good friends. Uh, they still help each other. They're still business partners, at least for now, or whatever. And But they understood that they were with each other for a certain phase. That's their prerogative. If they say that it works out for them and they're they're happy apart and that they understand that they grew out of each other and they're reasonable adults and they're raising their children, you know, as co-parenting and it works for them, who are me to say that that's not successful for them? Right. You know, I'm not going to encourage somebody to stay if because one thing me and Jonathan says in our own relationship is that. We give each other the power to choose that we want each want other. Each other. You know what I'm saying? And we have to keep that open. Yeah. I'm he knows that I'm choosing him and, and he's she, choosing me. But I'm Jonathan has that. the right to wake up one morning and not choose me. Right. Like it takes two to make a relationship and at the moment when one of us decides that it doesn't <sighs> doesn't work or it man. You have to give the person you love the freedom to choose. Yeah, I, I breathed hard because it was rough coming to that realization. Um, but it was, it was pivotal to come to that realization because I, we found strength in that un, that realization and that understanding because it's the power to choose. And it's no greater feeling to know that you can wake up next to somebody who says, I choose you. Yeah. You know, you know, people people get into uh, relationships and they do relationships very superficially with the I will nevers. I yeah, hate the I will know. nevers. I'm going to be real with you. If you're in a relationship, especially in marriage, and you're listening to us under the sound of our voice right now, or if you watch this when it's it's recorded, I hate the I will nevers. 
the I rule nevers are um, very superficial and you never can predict what will happen in a relationship and in a marriage. I think it takes away opportunity too. It, it takes away the opportunity to grow. It does. It really does. You know, we're, we're sometimes formed and grafted and shaped fr- from and by our mistakes. If we allow it to shape and mold us. If we learn the lesson and go through the hardship and go through the pain and let the pain actually birth something in us, we actually can become better people from that. But not allowing yourself to even uh, be open to those mistakes or open to those failures by saying I will never um, can stagnate your development in your relationship and even in your person, your own personal life. Um, I just hate that I will never. I understand that there is a time and place for everything. You know? there, there is. And that's not saying for you just to let everything happen. No, 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 that's no, no. Not. We're not just saying that. Keep it in the context that just Mm-mm. being open because you don't. One thing I, I've i learned to do in our marriage that I tell other married couples when I have the opportunity is that give the level of mercy that you that you would that you may have to receive. <laughs> that's so good. And when you're honest about who you are as a person and you're honest about your mistakes and you're honest about your lusts, yeah, even in a marriage, even in a you're marriage. honest about your lusts and you're honest about those hidden things in your heart, you would understand that, hmm, let me be a little bit more merciful because if I shall slip up, if I shall fall, if I shall whatever, because, you know, 14 years of marriage is a long time. You know, 25 years of marriage is a long time. You don't know. You don't know what, what roles you can come up against in all those years. And even yeah. if you're not married, just as a couple, you don't know what's going to come up. But just be willing to give as much mercy that you may one day need. Yes. And uh, and sometimes that's that's the realization factor, you yes. know. Oh, I would never. You don't know. You don't know. Put you in the right situation with the right atmosphere, with Pressure the right people. bus pipe. Sure does. Just, but oh. I think that's it. I think we had a whole podcast.